Hi there, my name is Josh, and I'm going to teach you how to get started with responsive design inside of Adalo. Now, Adalo's responsive design tools give you tons of freedom to control and decide how to make your app look great on every screen size. If you're used to designing for only one screen size, though, that task can be a bit intimidating. For that reason, we're going to look at a super easy beginner's approach to using Adalo's layout tools to make your app responsive. I'm also going to make more videos with more advanced techniques, but in this video, I'll do everything I can to keep things super easy. Now, my first tip is to start designing on mobile. This is purely subjective, but I personally find it pretty difficult to start on desktop. I tend to create really complex designs that don't translate well to mobile. By contrast, if I start on the most constrained screen size, it's pretty easy for me to scale up my designs. Additionally, resist the urge to design all three screen sizes at once. By this, I mean adding a single component at a time and styling it across all three screen sizes before moving on to the next component. It's much easier to focus on a single design at a time. Now let's start with this basic design. My next tip is to simply do that. Keep your design basic. If you find yourself with a screen that has dozens and dozens of components, ask yourself if you're really creating an ideal user experience or one that is cluttered and hard to parse. Try to visit sites like Mobbin and Dribbble and notice how clean and simple the best professional designers make each screen. It's not that they didn't think of adding more components to the screen, it's that they very intentionally kept it simple. If you follow their lead, you'll have a lot easier time designing responsive apps. Okay, so now we have our mobile layout here, and we wanna make it look good on tablet and desktop as well. Since this is a beginner tutorial, my advice is that you ease into responsive design by using fixed width components and custom layout. What that means is that you can do whatever you want on each screen, and it won't affect the others one little bit. Now this doesn't include our nav. Our navigation components scale beautifully right out of the box. I highly recommend that you use them for this reason. We've done all the layout work for you there. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is to go into the layout tab on every single component, find the width resizing setting and set it to stays fixed. This means as the screen gets wider, the components will stay the same size. Many responsive designs feature fluidly scaling components, and we'll see how to do that in a future video, but it's certainly not required, especially if you're new to design or Adalo. Okay, now that we have all of our components set to fix width, let's figure out anchoring. This setting tells Adalo which part of the screen the component should stick to as the screen gets wider. You can set it to the left, the right, or the center. Now for most of these components, anchor center will be fine because we want them to stay in the center of the screen as the screen scales. Notice how that doesn't work well for these two components though. When we have multiple components on the same line like this, we're going to group them. You can find the group option up here or you can hit Command G to quickly group selected components. Now, we're going to set the group to stays fixed in anchor center. The components inside a group will respond relative to their parent. So these two components will now stay put nicely in the center as the screen scales. Okay, let's stretch our screen a bit. Notice how everything is looking pretty good on mobile, but by the time we get to tablet, our design is way too narrow. I don't like that at all. Let's fix that. I'm going to drag the screen to where it just hits the tablet breakpoint. This is the narrowest width that our tablet design can have. So starting here, we'll make sure our fixed width design isn't too wide. I'm going to select each component and turn on custom layout settings for tablet. This gives you complete freedom to customize your design on tablet without affecting that nice mobile design we just made. Nothing you do here from repositioning a component to changing its size will have any effect on anything but tablet. With that done, we can make our design look however we want. I obviously want to make things a bit wider, but I also think this photo needs to be taller. So I'll do that and move the things down below it a little bit lower. Now watch as we jump back to mobile. It all still looks great. Okay, one final thing I don't like is this two column layout for this list. Two columns is fine on mobile, but it's looking bad on tablet. I'd rather it be four columns. To accomplish this, I'm going to use device-specific visibility. I'll copy this list, then switch to mobile, and turn it off for tablet and desktop. Now when I switch to tablet, the list is hidden. I'll paste in my copy of the list and make sure it's set to visible only on tablet and desktop. Now I'll set it to four columns and position it nicely. Now on mobile, I have a nice two-column list, and on tablet and desktop, I have a four-column list. Finally, I'll drag my screen up again to where it just crosses over into desktop and go in and set all my components to custom layout on desktop, just like we did on tablet. I'll take some time to position them all nicely once again. Don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel here. Remember, clean and simple designs are absolutely great. We can make some subtle tweaks here and we'll have a great desktop design with very little work. All right, now we're done. Our layout looks great on every screen size and we can continue to tweak each screen to our heart's content without worrying about the other screens getting ruined. 
And because we set everything to fixed, we never have to worry about all these things scaling or the settings for how they scale or how a layout will change as it's being automatically scaled. Like we don't have to worry about any of that, which is great. Before we go, let's review those beginner tips one more time. First, start on mobile and design your whole screen before moving onto tablet or desktop. Next, keep your design and user experience simple. Try to focus each screen on a primary task and a secondary task. Also, if you're just starting out, try to use fixed width components and custom layout so you have complete freedom to design on each screen without worrying too much about the complexities of smooth scaling. All right, that's it. Be sure to look out for our other responsive design videos when you're ready to dig deeper and learn more advanced techniques. Thanks.